Julia, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm talking with my good friend, Hannah Bateman, who was a dancer in the J team. <laughs> and we talk about all things dancing and film, Hannah's favorite behind the scenes memories from set and advice for aspiring performers. Let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> so funny story before we get into it, Hannah and I have been on Zoom for like an hour and a half. <laughs> we recorded a 40 minute interview that didn't save and you know what when that happens in life sometimes it's unfortunate but we're back we're gonna do it again and you know what maybe we'll even dig a little bit deeper this time around right Hannah I'm ready <laughs> round two here we go two. Oh, Hannah <laughs> How, okay, first of all, for people who don't know, Hannah was a dancer in the J team. She was P-Pack. Um, she was P-Pack. She, she was, was P-Pack. Already, my, <laughs> my mind already is out the door. Hannah was a P-Pack member in the P-Pack <laughs> um, Hannah, how, first of all, you know what? Let's go even farther back. Where are you from? How did you get your start in performing? How did you know this is what you wanted to do? And then how did your path lead you to the J team. Hmm. Good. A bunch of good questions. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I'm Hannah. I'm from Vancouver, BC. Um, I've been dancing, like specifically dancing since I was seven years old. The reason I got into dancing is because I was super shy in school and the teachers like told my parents I should try to get into something that would break me on my shell a little bit. So we put me in dance and I loved it ever since. Um, I got really, really into it probably when I was like 13. That's mm -hmm. when I was like, I really love this. This is what I'm doing. And then I started going away to like summer dance intensives. So I went to some in LA. I've been to some in Portland, all over the place. Oh, and then I got an agent once I was able to drive. Ooh. <laughs> that was when I was allowed to get an agent so I could drive myself to everything. Um, and then I had an agent for about a year. I booked those other jobs that I told you about. And then I got my audition for J-Team. <laughs> what were the jobs that you did before J-Team? Um, I did Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. That was my first like dance, dance job. And then I also did a little bit on Julie's. Julie and the Phantoms. I've been watching Zoe's and I loved, like, I love Julie and the Phantoms. That is like public information, but I've been watching. <laughs> extraordinary playlist and it's so good do you like it I love it I absolutely love it it's very good isn't it yeah and actually it's funny you bring that up because in this like questionnaire thing that I'm filling out for my acting class right now it really talks about like roles and shows that you align with and that's totally a show that my heart <laughs> they literally are just like in a conversation and then start breaking out in song and I'm like yeah that's me <laughs> yeah okay so then you've been dancing what how did you get to the J team I just made a really weird face when you were doing that by the way I was like <laughs> <laughs> to get to J team like the audition process yeah. Mm. So I got sent the email and it was a lot, a lot to learn. Jazz section, hip hop section, um, improv section. And I feel like there was something else. Wow. Yeah. And it was like quite a long video, <laughs> clearly with all those different sections that you had to do and you had to get it all filmed, send it in just as a self tape. We never got like callbacks or anything. And that was before Christmas break. So did you ever audition for an acting role or it was just straight dancer from the get-go? Well, I auditioned for an acting role and then the director sent an email saying that he would love for me to audition for a dancing role. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then that was all before Christmas break. And then my brain like kind of almost not forgot that I auditioned for it, but like, you know, when it's not like quite on your radar, you know, you wrote it. Yeah. Um, so then I didn't hear back until like mid January. And then I heard. Totally lied. Cause when you asked like, oh, does your brain forget about it? And I was like, yeah, my brain does not forget about it. My brain actually <laughs> hyper remembers. Like I'm literally sleeping and I'm thinking about the audition. So that was a flat out lie. I'm actually impressed. How do you uh, forget about it? Cause I would love to know. I think the only reason that I forgot about it is because I had to go visit my family on the island. So I like 
It was yeah. like thinking about visiting family and there's like a bunch of stuff going on. At the yeah. Time. It definitely helps to be busy for sure. But do you have those yeah. where like you literally are losing sleep over it? Yep. The yeah. one I just did. <laughs> yeah. Hannah, I've talked to you a lot about that. Um, it's a real thing, like for sure. Yeah. Learning how to release and let be. <laughs> because you get so connected to the characters Mm -hmm. like you actually do and you like can see it you can feel it oh I'm that person when like I'm reading audition sides but mostly when I get sent the full script I'm like casting the whole thing in my head yep I'm breaking out the wardrobe and then I'm like doing the most and then it's like heart-wrenching when it doesn't happen but yet in those moments you have to trust like we talk about that everything happens for a reason and I feel like even hypocritical saying that, not hypocritical, but like, I need to hear this <laughs> because I have been going through the like heartbreak and, yeah. and in, in, in those moments of like despair, you just have to trust that what's meant for you won't pass you by. Yeah. Yep. And it's so hard. It's really hard. And it's really hard, especially even after you've come off of a, such a big high of yeah. like first huge job. And then you're like, oh, this is the waiting game again. But like we said, yes, what's meant for you won't pass away. I'm gonna raise my hand. Um, do you ever treat yourself after an audition or like do anything to treat yourself for just showing up and putting in the work and, you know, chasing your dreams? No. <laughs> Same. I literally, yeah. Yeah, have you ever like thought about making that a habit? I didn't until you just said it. <laughs> I've had friends who like will just even if it's like I'm gonna go grab like a favorite snack or I'm gonna just do something nice for myself because we put our heart and souls out you know what I mean and it's like it's a lot physically especially if you're dancing that's a whole different level of like exhaustion but like physically mentally emotionally spiritually I think it's a really nice habit to get into to do some you don't have to like go buy a new car but like <laughs> you know <laughs> After every audition, I'm going to make a, yeah, I wouldn't make a huge purchase. <laughs> I feel like I should do something like that for sure for myself mm-hmm. the next time. Yeah. Cause then I feel like you feel, it's not like you don't feel accomplished after you send in a good tape, but then you're like really feeling accomplished if that makes sense. Okay. So you sent it in for winter break. And then when did you hear back? I heard back mid January. Oh my and- God. Yeah, and I heard back on the Wednesday, and I had to get COVID tested on the Friday, and then we were starting on the Monday. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It really does happen like that. You know, your whole life could change in a day, in a phone call, in a phone call. Isn't that wild? That's so crazy. And everything is so last minute, I feel. (laughs) In the film industry, I feel like you can never be like fully planned. No. Yeah. All of my plans, I'm like, I'm doing this as of now. Who yeah. Knows? Like literally every day is like, who knows? Who, who knows? COVID now, you know, people, you know, will show up to set and then test positive. And I've had auditions where it's like, you need to send in this audition in two hours because whoever gets this job is going to be COVID tested in three hours. And then you're working in four, you know, it's crazy. You have to constantly be on your toes but I think that's another good lesson constantly being ready because when those opportunities come in you don't want to not be ready yeah exactly and I'm like I'm such a planner mm-hmm. same you are I'm such a planner so when things like twist and turn randomly unexpectedly I'm like whoa <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> curveball <laughs> dodging all the curtains <laughs> Yeah, it's almost as if you literally have to plan for the curveballs. Yeah. Plan for the unexpected because that's what this life is. It's just, but yeah. it's that's part of the magic of it, you know? Like, yeah. I, love that. I love how you could literally wake up and who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> who knows? Literally. Who knows what you're going to get sent? Who knows what you're going to book? Who knows? Yeah. You heard back and then you joined the skeleton crew. So for those who don't know what that is, can you explain? It's basically where you're part of the creative process for like all the dances in, well, at least this one specifically was four dances Mm -hmm. in the film. 
and then you're given a role in Skeleton Crew as like one of the actors or I know that some people were the actual dancers as well. So you have to learn all of the dance numbers in the movie. And for those of you who haven't seen the J team, there's a lot of dance numbers in the movie. Yeah. And, and hard dances. Hard. Yeah. Heather's choreography is not simple. It's incredible and it's challenging. So yeah. I can't yeah. and you learned all of them in a day. We did, I can't remember, we did five the first day. Wow. So was your brain literally just out the window? Oh yeah. My brain was like, what is going on? Um, I also like, I feel like because of COVID, everything was like shut down. So we hadn't, I hadn't been in dance class in person mm -hmm. in a long time. So that was an adjustment all in itself, let alone being like working. Oh and, yeah. Like learning all the routines. Yeah. Yeah. That was an adjustment beginning of 2021. So it was still very much in the thick of the pandemic. And I remember just being in a room with other people, let alone dancing, was a huge adjustment. I don't think we all even gave ourselves enough credit. Going from literal lockdown for a year, like doing dance classes in our bedrooms, which, you know, is amazing that that was able to even happen. But like, you're not going full out in your bedroom. At least I wasn't able you know, um, and then to go into like a heavy yeah. movie, full out. Yeah, like a full change. So that was a lot for sure. And I remember this one moment, um, I was feeling so stressed. I was like working, I don't, I don't know. I just felt very stressed. And Joe was driving me to a different location to film one of the other scenes. Um, and I just remember him going, so how's it going, Hannah? And I was like, you know what, Joe? <laughs> I'm very, very stressed. Uh -huh. He's like, why? He's like, you're doing so well. Like you're picking up all the choreography. He's like, I would have never guessed you were stressed. And like, I remember having this whole deep conversation with him on the car ride. And I was like, wow, I'm being so hard on myself for absolutely no reason. Well, it's because you care so much. Cause I, I totally understand what you're saying. And, and in the same way, how do we tr translate that energy more positively and productively, right? Yeah. Obviously you care so much, but you're also doing an amazing job. And from someone else's eyes, like, like did, were you nervous in rehearsals? Yeah. If I were to know that, I'd be like, Hannah, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Cause you literally killed it. <laughs> <laughs> we're so amazing. And I would have been shocked if there was any ounce of like nervousness in you. When we are overthinking, how do we switch that energy into excitement or, or something more positive, you know? Yeah, I would love to know how to. So if anyone knows, comment down below. <laughs> comment below. <laughs> yeah. And for me, I've been thinking like it's a combination of, of not taking it too seriously, but at the same time, taking it incredibly seriously because it's your job and yeah. so deeply as we should, right? Yeah. It's like, okay. I won't take it as seriously, but I, but it's the most important thing to me right now. Like, where's that balance? <laughs> like trying to think of how you could switch your thought process. Yeah. Did you do a lot of uh, rehearsing at home when we weren't at rehearsals? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Cause I also, I had like a, an empty room in the house at the time because we were doing like renovations and whatnot. Yeah. So I had like a full empty room to like practice everything in, which was really handy. Yeah, for sure. I remember uh, when I was in the quarantine rehearsals before we even got to meet in person and I was just learning all the choreography on Zoom with Joe and Heather and, and they could not have been more wonderful. And I mean, doing this kind of like stuff on Zoom, not easy. And looking back, I'm like, they literally made the experience as positive and smooth as it could have been. And I'm so grateful for that. And watching the skeleton crew videos of you guys, I mean, I've expressed this to you, but literal lifesaver, like it, everything made sense. Yeah. Joe and Heather were like the best team. Oh. The best. The best. I really look up to them. It's amazing that she was able to be that calm with everything that she had to do. And the yeah. job choreographer on a movie, wow, that is a oh. 
huge responsibility. It really is amazing. Like all the things that have to come into play when you're choreographing. Like yeah. You just, everything, like the, everything that's going to be surrounding you, how much distance they're going to have. In yeah. That's another thing that the choreographers have to factor in, like where the cameras are going to be. It's different than just a stage performance. Would you ever want to choreograph for TV and film? You know what? I was thinking about that the other day when I was at rehearsal. I was like, is this uh, something that I would eventually want to go into? And I feel like longevity wise, if you want to make the career in dance last longer, that's definitely something. Right. But I definitely wouldn't be ready for it yet right now. Still, like my biggest dream is obviously being on camera dancing or acting. Mm -hmm. But I think like maybe when I'm older and my goal might be changing, that definitely it is a possibility that I'd look into it. Then it's so wonderful that we've been able to watch Heather and Joe work. Yeah. It's pretty inspiring. Yeah, it's really inspiring. And seeing like the wheels turn in their head, like you can almost just like see it. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> what were the coolest parts for you about rehearsing in person? Rehearsing in person. Hmm, let me think. Um, I think it was really fun seeing the connection we all had. Like yeah. that was definitely special and like I've heard that it's not like that all the time yeah um we definitely all got along like so well um and I felt <laughs> like it was really cool to see how much Joe and Heather trusted us all because they really gave us a lot and they really trusted yeah and it was really cool also seeing like the dances change from oh I just hit this the dances changed from when we first learned them in Skeleton Crew to when the actual full dance team is there and the actors have joined in. And I don't know, it was really interesting, like the whole process. Something that I remember that I just found so cool is I was shown, uh, I don't know the technical name for it, but basically in the scene where I'm like up on the bungee cords, I was shown kind of like a, it looked like a storybook of what the scene is going to be like, like a cartoon book. Yeah. So interesting to see. And it just goes to show how much thought and how many people have to come together. Yeah. Something like this happen. And that was just fascinating to me. Oh my gosh, do you remember when Michael came in to watch the dances? And some of uh, some people from our camera crew too. Yes. So exciting. That was so exciting. Uh, it just feels so official. Yeah, it does. Michael also is somebody that has my heart. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So just the loveliest soul ever, I yeah. swear. Michael Lembeck uh, was our director. And for me, even from the first audition where I got to work with him, I was just so blown away by how comfortable he made me feel mm -hmm. and how much wisdom he was sharing. And I was so appreciative of that. And I feel like the amount that we learned from him and from the entire team is, it was like a masterclass. Yeah. Okay, so what was the first day of set like for you? Do you remember? It was so fun. It was an early day, very early day, because I had to leave... My house at 3.55. I remember that. Five? That's so early. It's not even early. It's like nighttime. <laughs> so it's like late yeah. that night versus even early in the morning. Because you had to wake up at like what time? 3.30? 3.30. That's wild. Drove into set. And then I was like, just like amazed. I don't know. It was like so cool. Cause they like, you had your own trailers. You like got to see all your friends. You got your hair and makeup done. I don't know. It was a really fun day. And then we did my fave dance, dance through the day. Love <laughs> yeah. that one. I love um, the part where it's like, reach for the stars, glow in the dark. Yes. Yeah. That was a really, really fun day. I think a lot of people think that the process is glamorous. Mm hmm which I totally get is a common misconception. I do think though there are parts that are, well, sometimes, sometimes, depending on like what hair and makeup you do, but it's fun to like get your hair and makeup done, especially when the hair and makeup artists are such awesome people. And we were fortunate to have just like the coolest yeah. uh, hair and makeup artists to hang out with in the mornings. But what parts of the day would you say are on the glamorous scale are like, ooh, glamorous versus ooh, not glamorous? <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think here. I feel like um, sometimes for me, at least I don't know if this happened to you, but I would say like not glamorous for me would be when my tired energy is like kicking yeah, in. For sure. And I need another coffee. I need <laughs> something to hype me up. Um, eventually later on as 
we uh, had a few more days on set, I started doing like yoga to like energize my body in the mornings when yeah. I get there. Um, yeah, definitely. It's definitely common to feel tired on set. Yeah. For me, it was. And I was like, oh my gosh, is this normal? normal but it is yeah. normal you feel I mean tired. when you're waking up at 3 30 in the morning and the adrenaline right I don't know if, if you do the same thing but when I know that I need to get sleep I'm just laying there and I'm like oh my god I have to get sleep I have to get and then I can't sleep yeah <laughs> uh and that's really hard when you know you have a 16 hour day ahead of you were you nervous I wasn't like nervous, but I know what you mean. It uses a lot of it. You don't want to mess up. It's everyone's time, you know, not taking away from how amazing and exciting and awesome it is, but long days of, of Mm -hmm. exhausting work. I have found that pacing yourself is necessary. (laughs) Oh yeah. And I feel like for, at least for me, I didn't know, realize how many times we would be doing the same thing. Yeah over and over and over again just with different camera angles different everything (laughs) I remember this one scene when Tisha and Jojo were talking I think it was about the bow or like the all gray whenever we were doing Mm push-ups and you guys all got to go sit down but since I was behind them I had to continue doing the push-ups my dog um I remember definitely not having push-ups and watching and feeling bad it was just you in the back of that shot one doing the push-ups that's crazy <laughs> you must have gotten so buff after that though oh yeah I was just <laughs> it was funny having like all the dancers like sit and like watch while I'm <laughs> these push-ups. when you're on set obviously there's a lot of downtime a lot of downtime because it's to move the cameras or, or for whatever reason in those moments of downtime it's such an amazing opportunity to just be a sponge and leave it, just watch, watch how, look at the cameras, like observe, maybe ask a question, talk to somebody new, talk to someone in the crew, figure out, like learn what they do. There are so many pieces of this puzzle. Even if you're not the one like actively working, there's yeah. always something to learn and someone's to talk to. Oh yeah. Or unless you have to be quiet, which actually is a lot of the time. <laughs> so don't talk to someone if you have to be quiet. And another thing when you're dancing is, to make sure you stay warm. Yes. You don't want to pull a muscle. Yes. I don't know. In my experience, there's not like group warm up like in a dance class. And sometimes you don't dance until the end of the day. Like when we did uh, comp three, right? Yeah. We did scenes that whole day, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and there was dance at night. <laughs> at midnight. Midnight. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think we started at like 5.30 a.m. that day. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Did you have like a pinch me moment from set? From set. Mm. I feel like all of it was so, so new to me because before this I had only done just dance scenes. Mm. I mean, like in the movie we were dancers, but we were also in yeah throughout the movie. So I feel like that was really interesting for me. And I feel like, like this is really cool because I had no idea that we were in more than just the dance scenes. Yeah, that's amazing. No. Wow. Yeah, like, oh, this is really cool. And I feel like it kind of sparked my inspiration to like go into acting. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, that was me on the prom. Like that was literally my exact experience. Because yeah. I was a dancer, I got, I actually got to be, not like be in the scenes, but there were a few scenes where the dancers got to like be there. So mm-hmm. I literally just had like a front row seat and watching Carrie Washington actually do an emotional scene mm. I'm just like I know I have to be standing here but I also want to be taking notes so <laughs> I'll just take mental notes and then write it down later um and that's actually something that I wanted to talk about I don't know if you have done this are interested in doing this or have even thought about this but after I go home from set I will literally write a novel of everything that I learned everything that I observed do you write after a day like that? You know, I actually do. Mm. A lot of the time I will. Some days, obviously I'm not perfect. Some days I will be too tired. I forget. Yeah. I get home too late. But most of the time, even when I go to take like a dance class or something, I usually like to write down like a good little wow. snippet, inspirational like quote that they had said or something. Oh my God. I love that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love after dance class. Or if I was too tired, I would do a voice memo too. Smart. 
I do. I have like over 300 voice memos on my phone. <laughs> I do so many voice memos, but even like on the drive, well, not while you're driving, but, but before you like crash in bed, you know, after a long day, either write down something or voice memos or just get your thoughts out somehow, because it's a literal front row masterclass experience. Yeah. You get to make the most out of it if you choose to do so, I feel like, you know? Yeah, for sure. Now that you've had this experience and multiple experiences, what advice would you give to yourself uh, when you were nervous and excited and before, you know, you had the experience of like filming a movie? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I still get nervous about like auditions and everything. And I actually had my first like in-person audition Mm. like too long ago since COVID. And I was like really feeling the nerves resurface. So I feel like what I would say to myself is, I'm enough. I'm here for a reason. Mm. I've trained like my whole life for these situations that I'm being thrown into. I'm prepared. I'm ready. Mm. I just have to be myself. And yeah, what what was the saying I was wanting to say? What's meant for you won't go by you. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's as simple as that. And if you put in the work, it's going to pay off, whether it's now. Right. I think that is a really important thing to say because what's meant for you won't pass you by but if you're sitting on the couch it will you yeah know, like well you have to be mm, there's more to that you know yeah. um, I think just like you said if you're sh- if you're showing up if you're putting in the work if you're dreaming it if you know if, if you're just simply showing up yeah then what's meant for you won't pass you by yeah, exactly you know what I mean yeah you got to be putting in the work and sometimes you don't feel like it but you still have to do it if you're tired, you know? Yeah. Like some days when I'm feeling like a little bit down on myself, um, it's sometimes hard in the moment to feel like, yeah, I want to go do my acting class right now. Yeah. Um, but when you do it, it feels better. Like For sure. You know For what sure. I mean? Pushing yeah. through those moments. And I, what, what I've also been learning is that part of putting in the work and being actor, singer, whatever, just an artist, performer in general is the, the work of taking care of yourself and the mental health yeah. work. And all of that work is just as important, if not the most important thing, because you can't show up to any of this mm-hmm. in your most authentic, uh, open, most present way if you're not centered with yourself. And of course, that's not an end goal. Like we're always trying to, you know, better ourselves and and whatever. But I've just been really um, focusing on the self-work, which in turn, I think will make everything else easier and more enjoyable. For sure. Yeah. I really want to work on not getting, well, I haven't had in-person auditions, obviously, since COVID, everything's been on self-tape. Right. But I realized in that moment of going into my in-person one, I want to work on calming those nerves staying centered Mm -hmm. that's something I feel like I personally need to work on moving forward (laughs) yeah I do like all like journaling like I have a lot of stuff that I do as my own work with myself but I also want to be able to use it when I go into these situations of like in-person auditions I want to stay with all the work that I've done and know that I'm ready you said about knowing that you're prepared like you've been studying you know sometimes I feel like say an audition is like a test in school we, we get there and then we feel for whatever reason, like we are not capable or not prepared, but you have been studying, you have been doing the work, you know? So it's remembering that you are capable and whatever's, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. It goes back to what's meant for you and pass you by. Yeah, exactly. What are your big goals for the, for the near future? Near future, definitely working on film and TV. Mm-hmm. All doing everything. I want to do it all. <laughs> yeah yeah that's definitely like and obviously like I said a little bit earlier um that I just got inspired to do acting from J team yeah so I really want to pursue that as well on t- film and tv yeah I love that so much what was it like watching the movie back for the first time surreal I was like what <laughs> what yeah it's really cool to see all that hard work in like a movie an hour-long movie (laughs) oh and it's it for me it was so cool seeing others enjoy it yeah that was really fun um (laughs) 
Um, my boyfriend has a little cousin. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, I think she, she would be like six years old. So right up her alley and she just got into dancing and everything. And she cried watching me. She cried. It was so sweet. She's like, that's my best friend. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is the cutest thing ever. I'm sure you're inspiring her so much. Yeah, it's, she's such a sweet kid. She plays my, when she was in preschool, she would play my YouTube dance videos um, for the kids. (laughs) Oh my God, I love that. Yeah, she's quite sweet. <laughs> That's so much. Another thing that I found really fun is like some of these girls um, I've known since I was like seven years old. Wow. And so fun to see like their dreams coming true and like our lives kind of still being connected somehow. Yeah, I guess I kind of asked you this, but if you can go back even farther, what advice would you give to your, your younger self or anyone who would come up to you and say, I'm a young aspiring actor, singer, dancer, you know, I want to work in TV and film. Like what advice would you give to that person? Mm -hmm. Be patient. Be patient with yourself. You know, I'm trying to think, Julia, I'm stumped. (laughs) I stumped you. (laughs) I think keep pushing. That would be like my biggest thing for sure. Like if you love it, keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Up on yourself. Mm-hmm. If you love it, do it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for doing this, not only once, but twice. <laughs> because my Zoom decided that once was not enough. Um, I appreciate <laughs> you so much. I am so grateful that our paths crossed. And I really, really hope, considering we don't live in the same country, that we um, can see each other in person sometime soon. Same here. I'm very, very thankful that our paths have crossed. Yay. Thank you for having me, by the way. Thank you for being on the channel. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Bye, guys. Bye.